Coming up, I'll show you what we have on our porch. With a very small area, you can do just the same. Sponsored by Stop Before You Dig, call Digger's Hotline first. Call three business days before you dig. It's the law. It's completely free, and it's for your safety. Know what's below before you dig. It's your responsibility. Call Digger's Hotline or visit them at diggershotline.com. So whether you have a lot of acreage or maybe just a patio, porch, or deck, or balcony, you can still grow something. And we're going to show you what we have growing on our deck here. Uh, and we've got a lot of things. We are going to start with the beets here in a 10 gallon grow bag from Root Maker. And the beets are bulbing very nicely. Some of them take a while more than others, but you've got a nice little uh, almost tennis ball sized beet there. So you can grow beets in a container. We do have a hanging basket in which we have rosemary in. And during the winter months, we will bring that in and then bring it back out. Now we have had romaine lettuce and then this butter crunch lettuce uh, growing and they have gone to seed. Now this here is a container in which a lot of that lettuce was grown. We trimmed it back. Now we have offshoots from the roots of the romaine which is extremely tender now. The romaine when it goes to seed or the butter crunch lettuce it gets extremely bitter because all the energy is going into flower production which will turn to seeds. And that's what we are allowing to have happen here. This butter crunch lettuce is a very sweet, tender, single head, about the size of a, a tennis ball, baseball size, somewhere in that range, uh, of lettuce that is extremely tender, very sweet. Now, we grow the red romaine and we grew some green romaine. And we found one interesting fact about the green versus the red. The green gets bitter much quicker than the red does. Now, these will go to seed when the temperatures exceed, uh, get very warm, and the day length gets longer. Though in combination of those two, that's when a lot of these cool weather crops will bolt or put seed heads on. But we found at that time of transition from getting growing to going into a bolting stage, that the red romaine really stayed a lot more tender and sweet and didn't have that bitterness that the green did. So we have put that in our notebooks and that will be what we will grow exclusively next year as lettuce in addition to this butter crunch lettuce which stayed sweet all the way up to that same point as well. We have them sitting in this uh, shelving unit that we have inverted and it now is a water reservoir. When the water gets uh, sucked up like it is here, we'll fill this back up so it's a natural wicking self-watering container. These two here are peppers that are grown in two gallon root maker pots that are root, uh, the air prunes the roots. And these are the two best peppers we have on any of our gardens. They're the peppers in the gardens, they've gotten eaten. The front yard gardens gotten eaten by bugs. The large garden, they're on the shorter size and smaller size, but these are two to three times larger than anything that we've got, and they're producing peppers. Uh, right here is a nice pepper that's uh, growing. So these have worked very well. So you don't have to have a lot of soil mass, but again, the smaller the soil mass, the quicker it will dry out. These are two gallons. They do have five gallon plastic units and then the grow bags in the white uh, coating there, they have from one gallon all the way up to 60 gallon in increments. So you can decide how much or how big of a grow bag you want. We also have just setting out here some lemon mint that we've gotten germinated that we will bring in during the winter months. If you're going to grow mint, you want to go ahead and put this in a container because it is very aggressive and invasive and can take over a spot very quickly if you do not want it in that location. We've got some herbs and some lettuce in seed trays here that we'll eventually put out in the actual garden. Another hanging basket is filled with celery. We have extra celery that we had started and this is just old soil from old containers that I topped off and then went ahead and threw these in there. So it just shows that if you've already used your potting soil years past, it will still grow something. It, this is old potting soil, at least a year old, and it still has the, the nutrients that it's needed. Now we did put fertilizer in this, but it's not just one and done type of use. So that's growing some celery. We have a tomato plant that is in a nice, uh, about a two gallon pot here. It looks wilted for a couple of reasons. One, 
It's very hot. The, the plant is going in kind of a defense mechanism. But secondly, I was investigating and I do see it's being somewhat attacked by some aphids and some white flies. So that is a problem that we are going to have to look into. It's got some curl, leaf curl here which can be a disease, but I think it's a lot of con uh, contributing factors to those aphids and those white flies. And if I shake the plant, I don't know if you'll see that, but we do have white flies that come off of it. So there's some soap remedies, home remedies, in which you can go ahead and work on getting those white flies out of and away from your plant. This is the advantage of doing containers, by the way. If this was in the ground next to three or four or five other tomato plants that was being attacked, we kind of have to work with what we've got in the ground. We can't extract it. With this here, if I had three or four or five tomato plants in containers, this one was the only one affected, I could simply take this and move it somewhere else on the property, get away from the healthy plants, and then deal with this one accordingly. So keep in mind, if you're gonna do a container gardening, that's a benefit to it. We've got a rail planter that has some bush beans. Rail planter simply means it's got a groove that actually fits on the two by four railing. If you have metal railings, there are designed uh, rail planters that actually hook onto it. And finally, the last two items on our porch is this wooden box here. It's about, it's eight inches wide by about 30 inches long that somebody was throwing away. It's good oak wood, cleaned. We filled it with uh, just potting soil, professional potting soil from Sioux Growing Supply. And we grew, we're growing beets in here and they're beginning to bulb, so that's working out well. And finally, you can grow cucumbers on your porch. We've got it in a self-watering, self-wicking water cooler container that we found. We didn't um, steal it. We found it and we cut the top off and inverted it and made it into a self-watering wicking container. And this has about four different varieties of cucumbers. And we've got this metal uh, wire-coated, rubber-coated mesh wire fencing that goes up so these can crawl up. So small space on a porch. You can grow a lot of produce in that small space, as well as indoors all year round. For more information, please visit the